Hi guys, Ryan here. Today we're going to take a look at the new Pico microcontroller from Raspberry Pi. In this video we'll take a look at the specs of the new controller, we'll then compare it to other microcontrollers such as Arduinos and ESP32s, and then finally we'll head over to our computer and write our first script for the microcontroller. So the Pico is the Raspberry Pi Foundation's first microcontroller product. It runs the Foundation's new RP2040 chip, which is based upon the dual-core ARM Cortex-M0 Plus chip running at 133 MHz with 264 kilobytes of SRAM. It has 26 GPIO pins, 16 of which support PWM, and it also has three analog input pins. It supports I2C, and it also has a micro USB input for power and data. Comparing the Pico to other microcontrollers, we can see it's much smaller than the Arduino Mega. However, it is about two times longer than the Arduino Mini. Comparing it to the ESP32, the width and the length are about the same size, however the Raspberry Pi Pico is significantly thinner. Comparing the clock speed of all these microcontrollers, the Mini and the Mega both run at 16 MHz, while the ESP32 runs at 160 to 240, depending on which development board you use, whereas the Pico runs in between all of those at 133 MHz, making it much, much faster than both the Arduino boards. Moving on to SRAM size, we can see that the Mini has only 2 kilobytes of SRAM, whereas the Mega has 8 kilobytes. The Pico has a lot more than both of the Arduinos at 264 kilobytes, whereas the ESP32 comes in above all of those at 520 kilobytes. Due to the small size of the Pico, it has 26 GPIO pins, 16 of which support PWM, and it also has 3 analog inputs. This is more the GPIO pins than the Mini, but significantly less than the ESP32 and the Mega. However, price to performance is where the Pico shines. It costs $4 in America or £3.20 here in the UK. That's about the same price as an Arduino Mini. The Arduino Mega and the ESP32 both come in around £10, which is three times more than the Pico. Unless you need the additional GPIO pins of the Mega or the ESP32, or you need the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth that's built into the ESP32. Looking at the spec sheet, it looks like the Pico is a great microcontroller for all embedded projects. To see how easy the Pico is to use, let's head over to our computer and write our first script for it. Before we do, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is plug our Raspberry Pi Pico into the Pi, making sure to hold down the boot button as we do so. Once it's plugged in, we can then let go of the boot button. And as you can see, it's connected a new drive to our computer called Raspberry Pi. Clicking on this index file will then take us or redirect us to the Raspberry Pi page where we can scroll down and we can either get started with MicroPython or C++. I'm going to be using MicroPython. So then we can just download this firmware file, just save it on our desktop. And then we simply drag this UF2 file onto our Pi. And what this will do is install the MicroPython firmware onto our Raspberry Pi Pico, allowing us to run Python scripts from our Pi. With that UF2 firmware file dragged onto our Raspberry Pi Pico, we can see that the removal drive from our Pico has disappeared, which means the firmware is copied across successfully. Now to write our script, we're going to need a Python ID. I'm going to use Thony, which has MicroPython support built in. So the link to download this will be in the description and then we can download for Windows or Mac or Linux if you're on a different distro. To install it, I'm just clicking on the .exe file. Now it comes up with this Windows protected your PC. This is just because not many people have downloaded it onto their machines before, so it might be untrusted. We can just click Run Anyway. Clicking Next, I accept. Leave that to the default location and create a desktop icon if you wish. Okay, now we can click finish and load up the IDE. I'm going to choose English and initial settings is standard. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is click on Python in the corner and change this to MicroPython Raju Pi Pico. With that change, we can start writing our script. So I'm going to first start by clicking file, save as, save it to this computer desktop and just call it uh, basic script .py and click save and as you can see it's now added that script to the desktop. 
Now we can start writing our script. This basic script is just going to turn the onboard LED on and off every second. However, let me know in the comments below what you plan to do with your Pico. So the first two lines we need is import machine, which will allow us to reference the pins on our Pi, and then import U-time, which will allow us to sleep one second in between turning the LED on and off. Okay, the next line, we define a variable Pico LED by using the machine.pin method, making sure to set the pin to 25 and the pin mode to machine.pin.out, which means it's an output rather than an analog input. We're making sure to use pin 25 as that is the pin on our Pico microcontroller that's assigned to the on-built LED. The next thing to do is create our loop by doing while true and then Pico LED dot toggle, which if the LED is on, it will turn it off and if it's off, it will turn it on. So it toggles between the on and off state. And then finally, we need to make sure we do utime.sleep open brackets one, which will make sure it sleeps one second in between turning it on and off. I'm just going to click file save. Okay, so the next thing to do is run it on our Pico. So to do that, we just click the run current script here. And as you can see, looking down at our Pico now, the LED is flashing on and off. I know that was a very basic Pico project, but with the GPIO pins and the fast dual core processor, there's room to do so much more. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.